Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall video. So today's not much of a tutorial, it's more of a taking a look at Blender 2.8 and giving my opinions and thoughts on it. So there's not really much information in this, I don't think anyone's going to find it useful. So unless you uh, just want to hear me talk about Blender for the next 5 or 10 minutes, then you might as well go ahead and skip this video. So as I mentioned, this is Blender 2.8 and it is in beta. So if you do download this, and I'll leave a link in the description. So it's still not 100% stable, it's very close, but it's not there yet. So let's go ahead and take a look. So at first it might be a bit overwhelming, I know it was for me, and I've been using Blender for quite a while, so taking a look at this is like when I first started using Blender. Everything looks different, yet it's still the same. So I mean, it's kind of weird. The icons on things have changed and they look so much better and cleaner. We have all these gizmos, which by the way you can get rid of if you don't like looking at them. But I mean, it's kind of a nice little um, user-friendly thing, I don't know. And the more you use Blender 2.8, the easier it becomes. Um, like for example, this thing here, the render panel or these render tabs have changed, yet it's still kind of the same, if that makes sense. So they used to run across the top, these different tabs, or well, maybe not this one, but... So they're all the same as before, as you can see. Most of them are the same. Maybe a few little differences. I mean, this theme looks quite nice, but you can always change the theme if you want to in the user preferences. We'll talk about that in a minute. But right now, I'm in Eevee. So the render engine that I'm using is Eevee. And by the way, if you've not seen any tests with Eevee, I'm going to load up a test file later on just to show you how amazing <laughs> Eevee is. Also, I'm going to do a digital map painting in Blender 2.8. So that's probably already been uploaded by now. But yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few things. So this side menu here, which, you, which we press T to get rid of. So I think it looks a lot nicer with these new icons. I'm going to select this cube here and press tab to go into edit mode. Yeah, we still have all these other options that we had before. But as I mentioned, the um, the icons are very helpful to let you know what each of these do. So I kind of like that. That's a nice little addition to it. One of the things I noticed is when you add a keyframe, so I'm going to press I to add a keyframe. Let's just choose location. Then if we jump ahead, let's move this. I location. Now we can see we've it's added um, these keyframes here on the timeline, which is very useful if you, let's say for example you have another cube, or let's pretend these are not cubes, and let's pretend these are any kind of object, I don't know. So once we click it, we can see that we've got these um, keyframes or not, which I think, again, is very handy, it's very helpful. So another thing I want to mention is the windows. So we used to click this icon and it would come up with a list of different windows we could choose from. Now when we click it, so it's got the same thing except it's laid out better than now in these sections and we can choose whichever one we want. We'll look at some of these windows in a minute. But one of the things I found straight away was a problem was I wanted to play through the timeline and to do that you'd press Alt A just to play through the timeline. But the shortcuts have been changed so we need to go ahead and change that back if you want it to um, go back to the original. One of the other shortcuts that have been changed which I used to use a lot is Spacebar. Now when you press the spacebar in Blender 2.7, it would come up with a search menu. Now when we press spacebar, so it plays through the animation. So I want to change this back. And if you like this, if you like the spacebar to play, and then you want your search menu to be something different, that's fine, you can keep it this way. But for me, I want to change it back to the old way, because I'm used to it, and I'm happy with it that way. So let's go to the user preferences and change it. Now, if you go over to file, and then trying to look for user preferences, you'll find that it's disappeared. And at first I thought this was a bug, but after looking around, I noticed when we click this menu here, we can change this to the preferences. So I'm not sure why it's been added as this window rather than how it used to be. Maybe there is a difference or a reason why it's been changed, but I mean, I'm not too sure why. So by the way, if you don't like this theme, you can go down here to the, you can go, you can just choose, right now it's blender dark, you can choose light which is kind of crazy. I think that's a bit too much. You can go ahead and create your own, install one from previous, but I kind of like this Blender Dark. It's, it's not too bright or distracting. It's kind of nice. So again, you can play around with these and change it if you want to. That's entirely up to you. But for us, we're going to go down to Key Map. You can see we have the left click or right click. And I know there's a lot of controversy over uh, left click versus right click. For me, I don't mind using right click to select. I mean, it's kind of um, unique to Blender. But if you want to change it to left click select, you can go ahead and do that. I mean, I'm happy to keep it on right click. So the spacebar action, I want to change this to search, how it used to be. Now I need to go ahead and change the shortcut for the play. 
for this, um, we could scroll down here and find it. I think it's in the frames section. Or you could go to the top here and, and then just search play animation. And I'll come up with these here. Let's just change this one. I'm going to change this back to Alt A. Save the preferences. So now anytime we load up Blender, these preferences are going to be saved. You might also want to go to your add-ons and add in your add-ons. So Node Wrangler is a popular one I used to have all the time. So I will activate this later on, but for now I'm just going to leave it deactivated. Same thing for anything else you use, like images as planes. So I use that a lot. But again, anything else that you like to use, go ahead and do that. I think there's uh, so loop tools. That's one I kind of use a lot. I'm going to use that one. So once you've activated them, just save the preferences and then you're good to change this back to the 3D viewport. So as I said, there's a lot of new things and we're not even going to touch the surface on most of them. I mean, it take hours of to go through everything. And there are really good tutorials on Blender 2.8 right now. So I will throw some links in the description if you want to check them out as well. Things are pretty much it's still the same, just a little bit different. And I could understand why people are hesitant at first for using Blender 2.8. I mean, we're stuck in our old ways and things go and change, but I mean, it's really easy to get the hang of. So another thing that I do like is I mentioned this editor window layout I do like. Um, if you notice here, we have the shader editor and we also have compositing. Now these two used to share the same window. We just used to change. Like, now we have our shaders in one window. We have our compositing in a separate window. So again, it's very useful, very handy to have. And so another thing I like, if we go to the shader editor, Let's go ahead and add a shader for our cube that we've got there. So now we have these color coded nodes, which is very useful. So now at a glance, we can see which node does what. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to do is open up a demo file and we'll take a look at Eevee. So on the Blender website, we have these demo files here and there's, there's quite a few really cool ones. For this, I think I'm going to download this temple by Dominic Graf, which is, it looks amazing. I kind of like that hazy atmospheric look. I mean, this Ember Forest as well looks amazing. And Mr. Elephant. I mean, they all look great, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm going to download this one. So if you do want to download this, again, make sure you just left click on this and it will then start downloading it. Once this downloads, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So all we need to do is go to File. Then I'm going to go to Open. Go to where you saved your file, which is this one here. Then we can go ahead and open it up. So this may take a little while. Let me just check if we're in... So we're in the look dev mode. Let's change this to rendered. So as we can see, this is the complete scene by Dominic Graf and it looks amazing. <laughs> He's done a really good job. So this is what it's going to render like. This is great. Look at this. Real time. So Eevee is definitely powerful. I mean, it's incredible what we can do with Eevee. So something like this in cycles would take so much longer to render, maybe a few minutes to render, whereas this would take maybe 10, 20 seconds. Um, we probably should give this a test render to see how long it would take. But I mean, just looking at this, it looks amazing. <laughs> and again, if you want to check out some of the other example files, definitely go ahead and check them out. Then we can go to file, go to new. So we have these presets. General would just take you to a general file like this. Go to new. Let's try 2D animation. So with 2D animation, we have this, we have everything set up for us. We have some pens, I guess some ink, I guess. So I've not really used a grease pencil. Maybe I should get my tablet out because using a mouse looks terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the grease pencil and the, so the 2D animation, it looks interesting. Maybe, maybe we can come back to this in a different video because there's, there's a lot to go through. I mean, Let's go ahead and try a different one. Let's try sculpting. Now for me, I'm definitely not a sculptor. I mean, I'm hard modeling, if anything. Um, so for me, this probably won't be useful. But for anyone who does like modeling, I'm guessing this is a better layout than having to have to set up your own each time or setting a preset. I'm guessing there's some benefits here. If, so if you do use Blender for sculpting, maybe throw in the comments below and let me know what you think of the 0.8's sculpting mode, I guess. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try something else now. So I do like to do a lot of VFX. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. You can switch to motion tracking, masking, compositing, rendering. It's, it's got a nice little workflow uh, process, I guess. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last one, video editing. I kind of like this. It looks better than it did before. We have a preview. We have our timeline, or I guess our layers. 
We also have our project folders. So this is definitely laid out better than it did in the previous version, so I do like this. There's a whole bunch of things that we've not gone into, and as I mentioned at the start, there's not really much information in this except for stuff that I like and things that I don't like. So what don't I like? Um, mm, nothing much. There's nothing that I don't like. I, so at first I might have been taken aback by all the different things, but after you get used to it, it seems like the old blender very much like the old blender just with a lot of improvements so if you guys want to see more or use something specific you want to see make sure you throw in the comments below and let me know so hopefully you enjoyed this video uh, i know there's not much information in it and it, like, it's just me talking about nothing much <laughs> if you did be sure to give it a like as always thank you for watching and uh, see you next time